Hey guys, so today I have a haul for you from both Sephora and Ulta and I'm excited to share. I already know there are some products that I'm going to be returning so I think we should start with a few of those because they're products from Ulta. I'm hoping to go today and return them. Okay, so the first thing is a palette from ColourPop. Now, I have been trying to think of new content to film. Um, so I go through this thing where I wanna film new content and then like intermittently, I have feelings of like, I know, how about I delete my YouTube channel and never do it again? So things in my brain are working out really well lately. Um, but anyways, I wanna film a like, full face of affordable makeup tutorial or get ready with me. I've done them before, but I just wanted some new products to share with you guys and, you know, maybe inspire some new purchases for people who watch my videos. So anyways, I purchased this ColourPop Bare Necessities palette. I was looking actually for maybe like a brand new ColourPop release. King. He wants me to chase him now because he has <laughs> he has cardboard. King. King. Hey. King. Okay, now I'm gonna shut the door and you're gonna be very upset, but I have to. Okay, he's upset. Um, all right, so I wanted to get a like brand new ColourPop release just because I know that can be more intriguing to people, you know, something that just came out, but I was looking at what they just released and I just was like, I don't want that. Like that's not something that I wanna have in my collection. Now, if I was a channel that was big enough to be like getting PR, imagine, I would love to try some of the new releases, but I don't want to spend my own money on a lot of the products that come out because I don't want to have stuff just to have it. I'm okay with like a little bit of that, but mostly I want stuff in my collection that I actually want to use and that I'm excited about like a normal consumer. So I kind of had to scroll back a little ways to see what ColourPop had um, because ColourPop does have obviously some more affordable products um, including eyeshadow and from what I've seen the quality of the eyeshadows are pretty good across the board it's almost like a brand that you can't go wrong with when you're trying to not spend a lot of money but you want a good quality product so anyways so I thought this would be a good pick um, the bare necessities I actually love the packaging of this it's textured kind of like um, pebbled leather sort of anyways I liked the colors when I saw them online, but when I got the palette, like maybe I should think about this again because what I was gonna say is when I got the palette, I was like, honestly, I'm bored. And I get 100% that this is a bare necessities. It's a go-to neutrals, easy looks. I mean, I what I have on my eyes right now, very, quick, easy, not dramatic, you know, those types of looks that you can get. And that's, I'm all about it. I am not over buying neutral palettes. I get excited when I see a neutral palette. I almost said I get turned on <laughs> when I see a neutral palette. And that's pretty close to true. So it's not that it's like, yeah, it's a neutral palette. What did you expect? Something about these tones, I'm just like, yeah, I guess. I don't know, but the, now I'm looking at it like in this bright light and I'm like, kind of looks pretty. So maybe I need to think about this. I haven't swatched it. Swatching it would probably make me, make me more excited about it, but I haven't swatched it because I wanted to return it and I, I want somebody else to be able to buy it without my fingers have being in it. You know what I'm saying? Um, I guess my point is there's a lot of shadows in here or at least a handful that I feel like I would never want to use. Like some of these cool, cool tones, I'm like, no, 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 thanks. I'll never use that. Um, I never like these really like coppery shades on my eyes. Uh, 
I don't know, maybe I should give it a try. Maybe I should give it a try. Let me know what you think down below, if, especially if you have it and you're like, yeah, actually the shadows are really nice. I definitely could swatch it and see what I think. I'm trying to think this through as I'm doing this video, but on first impression, pulling this out of the palette, I was like, or out of the packaging, I was like, mm -mm, not gonna love it. Um, the only other ColourPop palette that I have is actually what I have in my eyes right now. Super just like neutral browns, the Sandstone palette. And I do like this. They're very powdery shadows, but they are pretty good, especially for the price. So let me know what you think. I need some advice. Should I return this or not? I don't know. Anyways, sorry that took so long, but I like to just get my thoughts out with you guys. Um, the next product that I got that I was thinking I might return, I'm pretty confident about this one, is this blush from Flower Beauty. Again, I bought this because I actually don't have almost any drugstore blushes. I literally have one, maybe, maybe this is my only one drugstore blush. It's also from Flower. This is the shade Peach Primrose. Really nice blush, um, needs to be built up a little bit to really get the peach color, but every time I wear it, I end up liking it. So I wanted another one because I know I like this formula and I thought it would just be like, hey, adds a new color to your collection. This shade is Warm Hibiscus. I'm going to put on the screen what this shade looks like online though. This looks nothing like it. This I did swatch already. I'll swatch it for you guys here. Looks like a wannabe NARS orgasm. It almost, oh God, it's so freaking sheer. It's like pissing me off. It almost looks like a highlight for how shimmery it is or shiny. I don't like it. I really don't. This looks like it's trying to be a highlight. It's definitely not something. I can see me maybe wearing this once and being like, okay, it, it worked for the video, but then never using it again. So I don't want this. Um, I was thinking about some of the other blushes that a lot of people say are good, like some of the Burt's Bees blushes. Maybe I'll try one of those. I just don't, I don't think blush should be hard to do. And I just don't try a lot of drugstore blushes. Like I have no faith in drugstore blushes. So I really do think I'm gonna re ret be returning that. Uh, next from Ulta though, the everything else I'm not returning. So we got those out of our system. Let's be a little bit more positive. I got a lip liner that I really like. I'm wearing it today, um, although you can't really tell anymore because I have this darker color on top of it. This is from NYX. This is the Slide On Glide On Stay On, definitely a turn on, waterproof, extreme color lip liner. That's kind of cute. It says this lip liner is so good. The name had to be this long. It's in nude suede shoes. I feel like I've heard Leanne says talk about this liner. This is a great color. I am confused though. I'm going to try it. I'm confused of how, like, is this sharpenable? Because, oh, I think it is. Oh, it is sharpenable. Okay, cool. So it's sharpenable but it's so creamy, it feels almost like it's a retractable one. Um, but this color reminds me a lot of Charlotte Tilbury's Pillow Talk. Very good everyday nude pink. So I'm happy to have a drugstore option in my collection. Definitely if I end up doing that video, that will be the liner that I feature, the lip liner. Um, very, very smooth, creamy, and inexpensive. The next thing I got from Ulta is from MAC. I am so happy that MAC is sold so many places now, like obviously MAC, Nordstrom, Ulta, uh, lots of options for purchasing some of my favorite products. This MAC Extended Play Giga Black Lash was a have to repurchase. This is my most repurchased mascara by far. I use this exclusively on my lower lashes. It is the best of the best. I can now put this one in my empties, which I'm going to be filming an empties video really soon. So you'll see me talk about that. I might even film that today, but I needed to repurchase this. It is the best formula, the best wand. I'll show you the wand if you haven't seen it. 
very, very thin, skinny wand, grabs your lashes, doesn't transfer, truly, truly worth it. Like if they got rid of that, I don't know what I would do. Don't, I don't even wanna think about it. Anyways, had to repurchase that really happy to have a new one it was it was time for a new one then the last thing i bought from ulta and then we'll get to sephora is a different shade of one of my favorite bronzers from morphe so this is the bronzer that packaging has completely changed i'll show you this is the bronzer i've had for a long time this was in maybe like the past two years yearly favorites this is the glamour bronze face and body bronzer the shade that i have here is icon one of the lightest shades they have they started out with three shades and now they have like five or six which is really nice to see but this shade is really really good for me now but when i'm more tan i definitely need a deeper shade so i got one that's in the new packaging this is the shade mega star so this is what it looks like much much darker this bronzer is 19 dollars. i just want to show you the color difference 19 dollars, but very very nice smooth blendable matte formula lots of product in here you can tell with the pan size and I just needed a deeper color. If you want a reference, this reminds me of one of my MAC bronzers that is in the shade Dark Deepest. This is actually a powder. It's the uh, Mineralized Skin Finish in Dark Deepest. This is what I use when I'm really tan and this will be a great um, compliment for it. I actually mixed these both today and got the bronzer that I'm wearing right now. So I really like it. I like the packaging too. It's magnetic. The only thing is it's kind of big to wear how I organize my makeup right now. It doesn't fit perfectly, but that is probably, that is my favorite inexpensive bronzer. I know it's still $19, but truly it will last you so long. So it's 100% worth it. Glad to have that new color in my collection. Okay, moving on to Sephora stuff. I repurchased a couple of things that I'll share with you now. The first one is this product from the Inky List. This, for the time being, is my favorite makeup remover. I learned about this from Babs Beauty. Uh, had to mention her in every video, I suppose, but she really does influence me quite a bit. This is what it looks like. This is, again, a repurchase. I'm still using up the one that's in my shower, but it's getting low, and I need to have this on hand. What I love about this is it removes your makeup very, very well. It's a putty-like balm um, that kind of, like, gets oily and removes everything so i put this on dry makeup face and start massaging it in the other thing i love about this is it's ten dollars you get a decent amount in here how many ounces is this okay so it's five ounces um so you get a decent amount it's in a squeeze tube so you're not digging your fingers into a tub which typically i have nails on and that's just annoying. So I love that it's in the squeeze tube. Um, $10. What else? Yeah, it's just less messy because I've had oils as well. And I really like this balm, like putty texture because it's not as messy. You use an oil and it's like kind of slipping down your arms. This is just the honestly best one that I have found. Best, 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 best price. I would pay $20 for this. For sure, no questions asked, it's that good, I paid 20 bucks. The fact that it's 10, amazing. Love it, here for it. You guys have to try that if you haven't. The other thing that I repurchased just to have a backup is this Benefit Brow Pencil in Precisely My Brow. I got the shade number five, Warm Black Brown. Is that the shade I have? Okay, yeah. So I use this on a daily basis. This is my favorite brow pencil that I think I've ever used. And it's definitely worth the price tag for getting it from Sephora. Um, did I get this on sale? I feel like I maybe did for some reason. But it has a very, very fine tip on it, but not so fine to where you're spending like, you know, 20 minutes trying to create little hair like strokes. But this is my favorite product. This is my favorite color. It's perfect level of warmth it matches my hair 
excellent. Um, I really, really love it. So I had to repurchase to make sure I have a backup of that. The only other thing that was kind of a repurchase, it is a repurchase for me, but it's just a different shade. I don't know how much you guys know about my lifelong love for Estee Lauder Double Wear, but Sephora recently had a 20% off of all foundation sale and I had it in my cart and I took it out and I had it in my cart and I took it out and I had it in my cart and I took it out because I was like, I have an Estee Lauder Double Wear. I have other foundations that I wear every day and that I love. Do I really need to? Yes, I got it. So I got the shade Tawny and that is my perfect shade. Um, I just pulled out a darker one that I was using for like summer. <sighs> Guys, I try foundations but nothing compares to how freaking good this is. Nothing is as good. I recently tried the Lawless foundation and I had a really good first impression of it, but on further review, it just doesn't quite get me going like this one does. Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless, excellent, wearing it today, love it every time I wear it, great drugstore option, it doesn't get me going like this one does. The only thing that I have found that I like about as much is when I am mixing a couple different foundations in my collection. This on the other hand is one and done, perfect every time. I just wish they would make this packaging with a pump. I don't wanna have to buy a pump for it. It really pisses me off. That's the absolute only problem or gripe that I have, but otherwise, this foundation is absolute perfection and I got it for 20% off. So I, I had to, I love it. Okay, finally getting into some products that I've never touched. I am excited. So literally haven't even opened these yet. I got, and am I the only one who got this? I haven't seen anybody else talk about this. This is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Setting Powder. I'm realizing how lightweight this is. I got the number three golden beige. Literally haven't even opened it. Ooh, it comes with like a little puff. Ooh, a black puff. Ooh, okay, cool, 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 cool. And it has like a little triangle. That's so cute. Nice that it came with that. And I guess I got this, I'm like looking at the color like, I guess I got it for my whole face and not for under my eyes. Cause this is a little, yeah, this is a little dark. Like not too dark. It definitely looks like it's, okay, that's interesting. It definitely looks like it would be great for my face, but maybe not my under eyes. It's a little dark for my under eyes. Let's open this. I want to feel it. Um, I feel like I'm, like I said, I'm the only one who bought this. Ooh, feels nice. Actually looks a little lighter, like once you blend it in, just a touch. Um, so it has the holes there. I feel like I'm the only one that bought this. And the thing is, I was gonna say, is I love and have always loved Makeup Forever. I mean, I know they don't really come out with that much. This is one of their, recently, I feel like this is their newest product launch in months. Like I, maybe maybe they came out with something else that I was just like not interested in, but this is one of the only products that I've seen this year. They don't launch a lot. And I don't mind that. I do wish they'd launch a little bit more because I really freaking love the brand. I just like how focused on like artistry that they are. They are still a brand that has a lot of individual shadows that you can purchase. They don't come out with a lot of palettes. I love their eyeshadow formula. It's absolutely excellent. Um, they have a lot of really good products. I just, I do wish they'd come out with a little bit more. I don't know what what the holdup is there. But I'm excited to try that. I can't really give an impression other than the packaging is nice, the color looks nice. It felt smooth, definitely a mattifying powder. I'll try it out and let you know. The other thing I got is just a mini size, which I'm gonna try right now because I don't have any setting spray on. This is from One Size and this is Patrick Starr's brand new product. Uh, he came out with two setting sprays. So one is dewy and one is like a mattifying waterproof and that's the one that I got and it's an aerosol can. I was gonna get the full size, but I was like, wait, there's a mini, let's just get the mini and try it out because I, 
As far as like long lasting setting sprays, I love the Airbrush Flawless from Charlotte Tilbury. I also love the All Nighter from Urban Decay. But really my top one is this one from Charlotte Tilbury. So I was like, let me just get a mini. I love the idea that this isn't an aerosol. The only other aerosol I've ever seen is from Morphe, which makes not really like a long lasting one in my opinion. It's just like a setting spray that kind of like meshes all your makeup together, which there's a time and a place for sure. But I haven't seen one, maybe they have a mattifying one. I don't know. I've never seen one that's like, this is waterproof, gonna make your makeup last long. So I'm gonna try this real quick. Hmm. Okay. Um, okay, that's a little more. Hang on. Okay. Um, I did spray a lot, a lot, a lot. Oh, okay, now I'm feeling it. Uh, this is weird. Okay, so the scent is definitely like penetrating my nostrils. Smells like hairspray. All like, I know I sprayed a lot, so it's probably my fault, but I am already getting like a slight headache because it was very fragranced. Um, not like the Huda Beauty one, but fragranced. Um, what I don't like immediately, now it does say on it like light as air. What I don't like is that I can't really feel it on my skin until I really put a ton on and now I kind of feel it like setting onto my face. But it's like almost too lightweight. I like sprays that are fine, but that you feel them. Like I want my face to feel wet because I want my products to like have to like set down. I don't feel like this set my my stuff down, <laughs> my stuff. Like I'm not saying it didn't work because who knows. I like a wet mist because it's I guess it's just more comp gives me more confidence. See like I put up sprayed that and it's like you can see my chest is like wet from it. It just gives me more confidence that I got it everywhere. I'm gonna have to keep trying this and see. I don't love the feeling immediately. It says it's waterproof, sweatproof, transfer proof, 16 hour mattifying setting spray, sets your makeup with next level hold, light as air, non-sticky, continuous spray, offers lasting oil and shine control, stage ready glam. I mean, everything that says is like, sign me up, but do you know what I mean? Where I felt like it didn't really like mesh my products together. I still look kind of powdery. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't. Have you guys tried this yet? The Morphe one that's an aerosol still feels wet. This almost feels like you're spraying like air on your skin. Huh. Very unique. Okay. And I think the last product that I got is the most expensive thing that I bought. This is from, I think it's pronounced Gisu. And it's a honey infused hair mask. This was $60. My bank account was definitely like, wait a second. Like what's, what's the thought here? Oh, that's nice. It's like such a nice box. And then you have to take the sticker off and look what happens. Um, when I got this, I was like, did I buy a candle? <laughs> like why is, what is this in, in this packaging that's so elegant? I'll tell you one thing, I would have paid $10 less for such a exclusive box. I mean, it's very nice, but like, can I pay less and not have that? Um, so this is what the actual packaging looks like. It's just like a thick acrylic plastic. Um, so this says, oh man, this is weird. Okay. So again, honey infused hair mask. And it just says after shampooing, apply a generous amount of hair mask onto towel dried hair from root to tip, leave in for five to seven minutes, then rinse, follow up with a conditioner to lock in the nutrients. Use one to two times per week. Also can be used on dry hair. Interesting. So typically like the hair mask that I use is the Amika one. 
and I use that in the shower as if it's a conditioner, but I literally coat like from here down all on my extensions, I coat every strand if I can. And then I leave it on for like as long as I can without being bored to death. And then I rinse it out and that's my conditioner. So that's kind of why I bought this because that's what I was picturing doing. It says it's intensive nourishing mask enriched with honey from some sort of garden formulated to hydrate and replenish the hair, proves elasticity, shine, manageability. The key ingredient is honey, which is a blend of minerals, vitamins, amino acids, antioxidants. I, yeah, but anyways, I wasn't expecting to have to towel dry my hair and then put this on, but I'm willing to do it to see if this is like amazing. Let's give it a sniff. Okay. I was kind of excited for something like that smelled really amazing. It's very lightweight. It doesn't smell like a lot. <laughs> I'm like speechless. This, right now I'm like, it better freaking work because I don't, I don't know. I'm not as high maintenance as I am and as long as I spend or can spend like getting ready and you know, I get extensions and like I get my nail, like I'm high maintenance, but when it comes to things like wash your hair and then turn off the shower, towel dry your hair, put this on, wait seven minutes, get back in the shower, rinse it out, use another conditioner, like that to me sounds like, uh-uh, I'm I'm not gonna do that. I'm going to try it though because I have it. I'm going to see, maybe this will be like, guys, you gotta go get it. You know, it's 60 bucks, but make it happen anyways. Like maybe. I'm willing to try it, especially for you guys, let you know how it works. But right now I'm like, why did I buy this? That is everything that I'm talking about in this video today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know my mood is probably coming off as, I don't know, like not the happiest, not the most excited, not super positive and I don't know, maybe it didn't come off like that, but that's how I'm feeling. I'm really feeling like that lately. Um, and like I said, I really want to film. I seriously just bought, like less than a month ago, I got a brand new laptop almost exclusively to edit videos because the laptop that I had was actually my husband Jorge's and it's a MacBook Air. Like the video's done if you wanna sign out, but thank you for watching but yeah the laptop i was using is jorge's and it's a macbook air and that's how i know how to edit is on imovie um i'm an apple fanatic but the macbook air at least the one that he has like just doesn't have the processing or memory or whatever that i need because it was always messing up like every time i would even edit like just a 15 20 minute video it was giving me problems and very much frustration. So we literally got me a MacBook Pro that was a million dollars and I was gonna buy a desktop, but then the Pro, anyways. So I got a new laptop to edit videos because I really want to post a lot, but it's hard because I feel like only like three people watch my videos and I know this isn't like a counseling session, but it just, I go through like this wave of, I'm just gonna keep doing it. And I really wanna develop like a community where, I don't know, like a channel where I can make friends and have people with similar interests and people that get me. And I want that. And I would love, I would love this to be like a, serious part of my life not just like a little hobby that's like once in a while I post a video and three people watch it and that's the end of that story like I want this to be like seriously something that I put a lot of effort in and it's just hard to do that when you have negative thoughts all the time that are basically saying what are you doing like this is pointless um Nobody really cares that you're posting. Um, Cause of course like I do it because it's fun. I'm sorry I'm getting into this. I know it's probably like not what you guys signed up for, but 
I just feel like sharing. I, I do this because I love makeup and products and beauty and I'm really into it. I put a lot of effort into it. I think about it a lot. I love talking about it. It is such a big passion for me, but I'm not posting videos because it, it only fills me and that's all I need. Like I do post videos because I want other people to watch them and like them and I want to develop, like I said, like I want to create like a community of people where, I don't know, I guess I want friends, I want viewers, I want to make a difference where people come and watch. Like I want to be a YouTuber that my favorite YouTubers are to me. Like when I watch like Stephanie Babs Beauty and other people, I can't wait for them to post or for her to post. I feel like I really like, even though she doesn't know who I am, like I really vibe with like who she is or who she seems to be at least, you know, what I've seen in her videos. How she does makeup is how I like to do makeup. When she recommends products, she says like things that make me be like, yeah, that, you know what I mean? Like it feels like a friend. That's what I wanna be. And a lot of times when I'm posting, I feel like nobody's watching. So like, what's the point? And that's so mean because I know there's a few of you that watch like every one of my videos and that is, really motivating to me. Like, I really love it. It's not that I want a million followers or need a million followers to feel validated, but do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it is a lot of work. Um, it's not hard work, but it's a lot of time and effort and money too. And so if you feel like you're doing all of it and you're not getting the feedback or the payoff that you're looking for, it is very discouraging. All this is just me complaining. This isn't really like I'm trying to elicit a response in you necessarily. I just felt like explaining how I feel. Um, I don't know what else to say, but this is officially the end of this video. So I think I'm going to film like an empties video now. So sorry if I look exactly the same in another video, but thank you for watching this one. I really appreciate it. If you do have thoughts on any of these products that I was talking about, I truly want to know what you think in the comments below. Um, would love to have a conversation with you guys. I do also like to talk to you guys on Instagram, which I also think about deleting my Instagram like every 35 minutes. Uh, but if not, um, if I still keep it, it's at Nat underscore fabulous. So come follow me over there. I'd love to follow you back and we can be friends IRL. Okay. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.